Hey guys, I'm Justin Fabiano, work here at Capital City Sports. Well, my first impressions of him were, you know, a nice enough guy, and it was good to see that someone, you know, with his height disability could have an opportunity uh, to succeed in a college environment. I obviously, I penned the nickname Fabs, and uh, I, I definitely want to take credit for that because I'm very proud of that. I'm pretty sure everybody calls him Fabs. Fabs. All right, Fabs. Fabs, it's been a while since we've been in the board. You know, it, it has been a while, but you know what? I'm glad to be back with you, Mike. Let's, let's talk some baseball. He's got that personality where you just instantly, instantly like him. He's we love each other. I love Fabs. I love you, Fabs. I have so many memories with Fabs. Fabs first started, he would uh, put together some awesome highlights, just put together some awesome highlight reels, but he would pick the worst music. He would pick like Lord of the Rings-esque music. And he, for some reason, was obsessed with this song. Uh, the tiger song in The Hangover. But do tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snooze? Dude, that Fab's nickname really kind of gave him the mojo to uh, go on and be successful. Doug, Doug, oh, Doug, Dougie, Dougie, Doug, Doug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best trip possibly of our college, both of our college careers was going to Nashville and standing up on bars with Fabs. It was a great time and it was something we'll probably, both of us will never forget. Going down to Florida and to the SEC Championship game, two of the best times I've ever had. And um, I couldn't have pictured, you know, going with other people besides Fabs and the rest of the CCS guys. My favorite memory is, pro is probably the Georgia game moment when he flips out on a 70-year-old uh, security attendant at a gate after we've been given the run around from like eight different gates to enter Stanford Stadium from. I see Fabs with the huge bag, which is literally hanging on the ground. And we're frustrated. Couldn't like figure out where they were going or where they were supposed to go in. Fabs confronts and nearly jumps over a table <laughs> at one of the gate security guys. If there's one thing that is shorter than the frame of his body, it's the frame of his temper. When little things go wrong, he gets really mad at the technology. His temper and his mood swings are much tinier than the rest of us, relax. All right, Fabs, hope that's good for you. If you don't like it, My best impression of Justin Fabiano is, all right, this is it, this is it, you ready? What grade are you, Fabs? What year are you? Sophomore. Sophomore. At an eighth grader's height. Yeah. Unless I'm kneeling down on one knee, can't look him in the face. Coming up this week on Capital City Sports. It's new, uh, new decade for everybody else, but it's the same stuff, different day for me, baby. And I am happy to be here, standing next to you, man. Let's get right into it. Fabs did the whole ESPN gig, which was great. He was the first Capital City uh, sports member to break into those ranks. I remember he called me on his 21st birthday, and um, he's like, man, you'll never guess who I just met. He, uh, he met um, Cheeseburger Eddie on, on first take, and it was uh, his senior year quote in high school was, it's never easy being cheesy. So that was a big moment in his life. I have never seen a better men's tennis highlight in my entire life than when I quote, and Diego Cubas says no! And um, going downtown and just hanging out with him, he, he's, he's a lot of fun when he's drunk. Oh, yeah. Not, maybe, maybe more fun than when he's not drunk, which is really saying something. I remember that night, he was extremely intoxicated. Diego Cubas saying no. It's like what all the women tell Fabs. The things that I don't appreciate about Joseph Fabiano is when he comes with me downtown and no women will talk to us because Fabs is there. Fabs does have very little confidence in his looks. I don't know why, he's, he, he looks like he's an older guy. You know, he's got the full beard at, he's got five o'clock shadow at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And I guess Fabs is good looking enough to get a job. Speaking of fat chicks fighting for muffins, we need to talk more about Fabs as women. So Fabs had this crush on this Chelsea girl, huge crush, and just to impress her, he decided to do Mr. Relay. So he dressed up and had like the bright wig on and like a multi or a tie-dye toga. 
and all this stuff and went on stage with me, Waddy, and Munch and all went out there and did this like, there was a John Wall dance or something, all just for this girl. He kind of reminded me of that little, um, that little sweet and sour like gummy commercial. Um, actual size. My three words for Fabs. Short, tempered, Fabs. Intense, creepy. And whatever adjective there is for will bipolar yell at you then unexpectedly caress your chest within five minutes. I would say short Italian Costanza. The George Costanza comparison? They're one and the same. Fabs does compare himself to George Costanza and it's really spot on. His four years, he did some really impressive things here at SGTV at the school. It's the thing I remember about Fabs is that we had plenty of at each other throat Capital City sports moments when it came to co-producing the show, but I never felt like we argued as friends. And that was extremely significant for me. And His work has just helped build all of us up so much and you just, you can't quantify the effect that he's had on a lot of people. Fabs, brother, I cannot believe this is the end of the road for you. It's been a great four years for you here at South Carolina. I remember the first time I met you and to see you come all the way through here to graduation. I just hope you are very proud of yourself for what you've done here. You've made me a much stronger broadcast journalism student. I appreciate everything you've done for me over the years. Uh, one thing you've taught me that I still use to this day is how to multi-clip. So I appreciate that. But more than anything, I appreciate you being a great friend to me and just everything you've meant to myself and the rest of us over your years here. You have done a lot, and I wish you the best of luck in the future, brother. Take care. Thank you for uh, putting so much work into it. It's not easy uh, looking back, uh, putting all those hours into uh, you know a silly TV show, but I, I think you've seen it's, it's helped you immensely. And, uh, you helped me immensely while I was in school. You gave me the opportunity to actually enjoy my college experience rather than slaving away in SGTV. And uh, um, not only were you a great uh, co-worker, you're a great friend, and I uh, hope to work with you uh, again in the future. So thanks, Fabs. So Fabs, we've been working just about every day together for three years. Uh, whether we saw each other every day or phone calls, text messages, we were always talking. And it's, it's going to be weird not to see you around next year. Um, you've done a ton, a ton, a ton of great work for Capital City Sports and SGTV. I don't know where we would be without you. But most importantly, I consider you one of my closest friends in the world. I can't imagine my experience here being um, any better with, with you and the rest of the guys. And I just want to wish you the best of luck. You really, I honestly believe, you can do anything you want. And uh, I love you, man. Take care of yourself. So Fabs, the time has finally come. You're graduating, you have a job, you're gonna be down in Augusta, we're all proud of you. And I just want to thank you for everything you've done for us here on the show and all the great times we had as friends because over anything else, we are great friends and all the trips we've had, they're memorable experiences that I won't forget. And we'll definitely be staying in touch and I'll miss you, man. Love you, Fabsy. Fabs, uh, you probably know what I'm about to say. We've had our moments, we've had our our verbal scuffles, and it's been exciting to say the least. Um, we haven't always seen eye to eye on things. We have two very different styles, but I come to look back in retrospect that uh, um, that you were really passionate. And you, you had a lot of. We have a lot of things in common, and even back a few years ago, uh, we were after the same thing. Where we wanted to become better journalists, and we wanted to enjoy college, and we wanted to be a part of something like Capital City Sports. And we just had two di very different ways of trying to go about doing that. And I can look back now, and like, I really respect those things about you, and that passion and that work ethic and the quality of product you put out, that you took pride in what you did every day and that we put our names on it and that was significant to you and it was significant to me. And I believe we came to rely on each other. I mean, uh, I was very laid back when I came to college and maybe a little too laid back and you, and you kind of helped me, kind of helped me focus and kind of helped me uh, learn, learn a little bit about people and how to deal with people. I had plenty of practice with you. Um, but I hope that at the same time, maybe I helped you, uh, you know, lay back a little bit and, and, and enjoy things a little more. Um, so I just want to say I appreciate everything. You've had a profound impact on me, not only as a journalist, but as a person. Uh, you're a great friend of mine. Everything you get, you deserve. All the job offers and beautiful women that I'm sure will eventually come your way. 
um, everything you get you deserve man and uh, I mean that sincerely I love you bro and wish you the best and you know I'm only a phone call away and, uh, and I know we'll have some great things in the future.